road to Emmaus, which is one of the amazing stories of uh, Jesus appearing to his disciples on that first Easter day when he'd risen from the dead. Uh, on the road to Emmaus, Jesus explains to his disciples that the whole of the Old Testament is about him. And so a legitimate question for us to ask whenever we read an Old Testament passage is where is Jesus in this book? Where's Jesus in the book of Numbers? Well, we saw yesterday that um, God promised Moses that he would raise up a successor to him, someone who would bring his people into the promised land. And therefore we see uh, there's a hint about Jesus there. Uh, uh, the manna, the bread that comes down from heaven. That's also a Numbers story. We haven't had time to look at it this week. Uh, Jesus in John chapter 6 uh, picks up that image and describes himself as the bread who came down from heaven to give life to the world. Uh, this passage that we're going to look at today, the little story about the bronze serpent, is picked up again specifically in the New Testament in John's Gospel. Just as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so, said Jesus, the Son of Man, his title for himself, will be lifted up. Uh, let's hear how the story goes. Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. They travelled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go round Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread. There is no water. And we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. What's the big surprise in the story? Have you spotted it? I mean, there are, there are, there are some little surprises. Uh, one little surprise is the fact that the people grumbled, even though God was amazingly providing for them in the, the, the desert. Look what they say specifically about the food. We detest this miserable food. They say there's no bread and no water, despite the fact that bread is falling down from the sky every day. That's the manna. And water gets provided when it's needed, as we heard in yesterday's story. They say, we detest this miserable food. You're a people of two million in the middle of the desert and God is providing for you. Give him a break, you might say. Small surprise there. Small surprise again about the fact that God punishes the people for their grumbling against him. He does not allow them to carry on in their sin. He says, look, I'm sending this punishment against you. And the punishment at the moment is the snakes. Uh, small surprise. Uh, is it a surprise, perhaps, that uh, God decides to forgive them when they uh, uh, when they repent? Well, that's not really a surprise because we know that that's part of God's character to be merciful, to uh, be uh, forgiving when people repent. The surprise, I think, is this, that God tells Moses to make a bronze snake and put it on the pole. And that is going to be, if you like, the kind of mechanism that activates God's forgiveness. Does that just sound a bit odd? Does that sound not quite like biblical religion? It sounds almost a little bit like magic. You know, look, look at, look up there, and uh, you'll be, uh, you'll be healed of your snake bite. Look anywhere else, and you won't. What's going on? Well, Jesus has a comment, comments on this passage, and Jesus said, "Look, the snake on the pole is basically a kind of prototype for what Jesus is going to do." Jesus lifted up on the cross. God could have forgiven our sins any way he wanted. He is God. But God says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my son up on a cross so that people see the seriousness of sin. And so that people have got a, a, a visible way to demonstrate that they really do trust me. You see, why was it so important for the Israelites to look at that bronze snake? Well, it was a way for them to demonstrate they really did trust God. They weren't just uh, emptily or uh, meaninglessly babbling the words, oh, please, please, God, forgive me. They had to show. Maybe it took a certain amount of humility for them to turn and look. Yeah, God has actually forgiven me. And there's the sign of it. I have to turn and look at that snake. When anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. And Jesus said, for New Testament believers... 
the cross of Christ functions in the same way. We turn to Christ, we say in the baptism service, those who turn to Christ, to, who recognise that his death paid the price of our sin, we have them forgiven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are always uh, kind and loving and merciful and forgiving. Even those uh, grumbling Israelites who should have been grateful, you forgave them. And you instituted that uh, little ritual of looking to the snake to have their sins forgiven. Thank you that that points to the wonderful death of Jesus. And we pray that we may always faithfully look to him turn our eyes to the cross, fix our eyes upon Jesus and know that your uh, forgiveness of our sins was bought at the price of his precious life. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Come back tomorrow. It's the last one in our series of Wilderness Wanderings. God bless you.